In a previous video, we proved that the power set of the natural numbers is an uncountable set. In fact, we proved that it is equinumerous with the real numbers, which is a pretty nice result. But now let's look at a certain restriction of the power set. Recall that the power set is the set of all subsets of a certain set. In this case, the set of all subsets of natural numbers. And that brings us to the following question. Is F, we'll call it F, which is the set of all finite subsets of the natural numbers, countable or uncountable? And maybe let's motivate for why this question is interesting. And it has to do with something called the continuum hypothesis. So if we start with the natural numbers, we can apply the power set and we end up with a set with strictly larger cardinality. And the continuum hypothesis says that there are no cardinalities between the natural numbers and the power set of the natural numbers. So that means if we show it's countable, well then of course, by definition, that means it's equinumerous with the natural numbers. But if it's not countable, then it must be equinumerous with the power set of natural numbers. Because like I said, continuum hypothesis says that there's nothing in between. And this is a fairly standard result that you can find in lots of different set theory textbooks. But if you want a resource online, you can find a pretty similar proof to this on proofwiki.org. Okay, so let's maybe see how we can do this. So we'll end up showing that yes, it is countable. And thus what we need is a bijection from this set F into the set of natural numbers. But finding a bijection is pretty difficult. So what we'll do instead is find an injection. So let's find an injective map. In other words, a one-to-one -one map from F to the set of natural numbers. And then we'll find a one-to-one -one map from the set of natural numbers to F. In fact, that one-to-one -one map is fairly straightforward. We can just take a number in and assign it to its singleton. And then we're pretty much good to go there. That's definitely a one-to-one -one map, and it definitely goes from the right set to the correct set over here. And then, and then with these two injections, we can apply something called the Schroeder-Bernstein theorem. And the Schroeder-Bernstein theorem will say that in fact, F is equinumerous with the natural numbers. In other words, F is countable. Okay, so let's just reiterate what we've kind of already talked our way through and what we need to do. So in my mind, we're done with this part right here which this part right here is the part where we show that there's an injection from n to the set of all finite sub subsets of n. And now we just need to find an injective map, in other words, a one-to-one -one map from f to n. Okay, so let's do that. So let's define the following function. I'll call it g, and it goes from f to the natural numbers. So that means we need to have an input that's a subset and the output, which is a well-defined natural number. So this is the way that I will define it. So let's take the subset A1, A2, all the way up to A sub N, for instance. Great. So that's most definitely a finite subset of natural numbers and we will assign it to the following natural number, p a1, p sub a2, all the way up to p sub a sub n. And you might say, well, what is this p object? Well, we'll say p sub k is the kth prime number. Great. So let's do a little bit of an example of this so we have a feel for how this works. So let's maybe take the set 1, 2, 9, and 11. And notice that that will get mapped to the first prime, which is 2, times the second prime, which is 3, times the ninth prime, which is 23, times the 11th prime, which is 31. So in other words, it gets mapped to 4,278. Okay, nice. And now our goal will be to show that this function is one-to-one. -one. So let's get to that. 
Okay, so let's recall that we defined this function g. It went from the set of all finite subsets of the natural numbers to the natural numbers. It took this finite subset a sub one through a sub n to this product p sub a sub one all the way up to p sub a sub n, where those were the prime numbers that we talked about before. And now what we'll do is show that this is an injective function. Okay, so let's start by supposing that we have x and y, which are subsets of natural numbers, and their cardinality is less than infinity. So in other words, they are inside of f. This is exactly what it takes for these two sets to be inside of f. They've got to be subsets of the natural numbers, and they have to have uh, finitely many elements. Okay, great. And then we also want to suppose that they have the same output when, when g is applied to them. So we'll say such that g evaluated at x is the same thing as g evaluated at y. Okay, and then our goal, which will show that this is a one-to-one -one function, is to show that x is equal to y. So this is the standard strategy of showing that a function is one to one. So you start by assuming something like this, g of x equals g of y, and then you show that that leads to x equals y based on the definition of the function. And in fact, that's technically the contrapositive of the definition of a function being one to one, but let's recall that the contrapositive and the statement are equivalent. Okay, so let's get to it. How do we show that one set is equal to another? Well, the classic way to do it is by double set inclusion. So let's do it that way. So let's take some x, which is in x. Okay, but let's notice that that means that p sub x divides g evaluated at capital X. And why is that? Well, notice if x is in a set like this, then that means it's one of the members, which means the xth prime number is one of the factors over here on the right-hand side. But that being a factor over here on the right-hand side means that it divides the product, but that means it divides the output of this function. Okay, but that tells us that p sub x divides g of y. Okay. And that's because g of x is equal to g of y. But now if we introduce some notation, so let's maybe set y equal to y sub 1 all the way up to y sub m. And notice that this means that p sub x divides py1 all the way up to pym. Great. But then let's recall that if a prime divides a product, then it has to divide one of the terms from that product. So in other words, we have p sub x divides p sub y sub j for some j, which is between one and m. But if we've got this divisibility condition on primes, that means we have equal primes. So that's essentially just from the definition of a prime number. The only divisors are, of a prime number are one and the prime itself, but we have p of x is a divisor of this prime number. We do not take the number one to be a prime, so that means these two prime numbers have to be equal. So we've got p sub x is the same thing as p sub y sub j, but notice if p sub x is p sub y sub j, that means x is an element from our set y. And that's because maybe we could put one last step here that says that x equals y sub j. Just think about it. This means the xth prime, and this means the y jth prime. But if you're putting the primes in order, well, there's no real confusion over the fifth prime and the fifth prime. It's the same position in the list. Okay, so now we've got x is an element of y, but let's notice that starting here and ending here means that x is a subset of y. But let's notice that there wasn't anything special about starting with x. In fact, we could have started with um, capital Y instead. And this is like a great place to use 
the mathematical tool of similarity. And in fact, this is just based off the symmetric prop, the symmetric roles that the sets X and Y are playing. So similarly, we can say that Y is a subset of X, but that means that X equals Y. But then if x equals y, then we have an injective function. So we've got an injection from f to n. Then earlier in the video, we found an injection from n to f. But then by the Schroeder-Bernstein theorem, like we discussed earlier in the video, that means that f and n are equinumerous. But that means that this set is countable because being equinumerous with the natural numbers is the definition of countability. Okay, so like I said, I previously did a video on the uncountability of the power set of the naturals, and that should be on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. Furthermore, if you're still sticking around, maybe consider joining the Patreon. It's the best way to help this channel out. And in fact, we've got some nice goals associated to the Patreon, like, for instance, turning ads off the course videos on the second channel, just to remove any barriers or any distractions from the learning, which is the focus of that second channel. And that's a good place to stop.